Hey YouTube, Dark God back again with uh, another one of my reviews. Uh, busy weekend, but um, I'm not going to get mo many movies in. I got a lot of stuff to do this weekend. But uh, today I actually only watched, or, I'm sorry, yesterday I actually only watched uh, one movie. Uh, it was a movie of the day for DVDTalk.com, and that movie was Phantasm. Now, after watching Phantasm Ravager, watching the original Phantasm was a breath of fresh air. Um, it's, a, in my opinion, a classic film, a classic horror film. Uh, has very memorable characters. Reggie, the tall man, both excellent characters throughout the whole entire series. Uh, Mike and Jody, uh, secondary, I think. Um, Reggie is obviously the, not in this one so much the protagonist, but for future films he is the protagonist and uh, pushes the story along. And the tall man is such an awesome bad guy. Uh, the acting in this is, is top-notch from Angus Grimm. Um, Reggie Bannister is not the best actor, but he's kind of got that Bruce Campbell charm where, you know, he's a little, uh, little off-centered, off, uh, not the best actor, but he knows where his limits are, and he pushes with them, and he uses them, and he's, he's just a very good character, like I said, kind of similar to Bruce Campbell. Um, Jody and, uh, Mike, uh, Mike is played by Michael A. Baldwin, I think, and Jody, his name always escapes me for some reason, I can't ever think of his name, uh, both good actors, but, um, they throughout the series they become like the secondary characters. I feel like I, they're not even in a couple of them. Reggie obviously keeps it, but they're good in this. Um, the best thing about this, I think, is first of all the music. The music is excellent in this. Uh, Coscarelli, I think, helped with the score uh, besides directing, and um, it does shine through. It it's one of the best parts of the film. Uh, probably second only to Angus Scrim's acting. Um, Tall Man is just such a iconic horror character that. And it's so much what he brings to it. Just, I mean, this this Shakespearean trained actor acting as a, a demon who shrinks uh, dead bodies down to little dwarf sized Jawa dwarf sized Jawa looking creatures, and it, it's just amazing that he's took it, didn't even look back at it. Just, you know, it it seems like a role that would be below him, but he didn't let it be below him. He just, you know, put all his skill into it, and it was very top notch. Uh, special effects are pretty decent in this film, too, for a 1979 film. Um, I mean, a lot of the blood is, is kind of hokey with the yellow look and the green look, but it does work. Uh, the scene when they cut off the fingers, it's a, it's a little hokey, but it, it's it's creepy at the same time. Um, and the ball, everything with the ball is just amazing. I mean, the way they, they drills into the head, I mean, the, I know how they film it with it in reverse, but it just works out, especially with the one guy pissing his pants when, he, when the ball gets him. Um, all in all, it's definitely a uh, 7 out of 10 I would give it. Uh, just a classic. It's up there with uh, all the others. Name and Elm Street, Friday the 13th. Definitely a must-watch film if you're a horror fan. Uh, before I forget, the shirt of the day. Um, this one's a little bit of a, one of those wild cards, that, like I said earlier. But it is my Misfits t-shirt. Now, you might, not, you might say the Misfits, uh, you know, not really anything to do with horror, but I disagree. I mean, a lot of their albums and songs are named after horror movies, and uh, obviously their symbol is from, what is it? Oh, man. Oh, man, how pathetic do I look? I can't remember now. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll remember when I uh, end this video in about two seconds. So this is Dark God, and I will catch you on the flip side.